In this video, I wanted to give you some tips on ways that you can troubleshoot when your PDM from your Omnipod 5 is not reading the signal from your Dexcom, meaning you open up your Omnipod PDM, you look for the CGM reading and it's just not there. It'll say looking for signal, I think is, is usually the language. Um, if you look in the, the history of your PDM, you'll also be able to see, if you look in the details, you'll be able to see if how long it's not been reading. So is it just the last reading from the last five minute interval or has it not been reading for a number of hours? Um, this can cause all sorts of problems when it does occur because if you think about it, the Omnipod 5 is, is connected directly to your Dexcom. That's the whole point of it being a closed loop system. So since it, when it can read the Dexcom appropriately, it's gonna take insulin away if it thinks that you might be going low and it's also gonna try to give you insulin if you're going high. Now, additionally, when you use the bolus calculator, you're going to be able to normally press the enter CGM value to automatically uh, put that in there when it's calculating how much you should have for a meal. And of course, that's not going to work if it can't read it. So let's talk about like why it's not reading it in the first place. And then a couple of things that you can do to try and troubleshoot it. Um, I'll just say like, I, this is not stuff that I've read from a manual or anything like that. It's just stuff that I found and that has worked for me. So the first thing to be aware of is that it's a Bluetooth signal that we're concerned about. So when the Omnipod 5 is not reading the Dexcom, it just means there's some issue with the Bluetooth signal between those two devices. Now, my understanding is it has nothing to do with the controllers themselves. It really has all to do with the, the devices on your body. So in my case, I wear my Dexcom behind my, my right arm here, and then I wear my Omnipod on my the right portion of my thigh. So they're both on the same side, um, and that's what's called line of sight as far as Bluetooth is concerned. Now, Omnipod says that the devices do need to be in line of sight, but that can be a little bit confusing, and it's really not that um, robust, meaning like even slight deviations can cause the signal to, to not work. And I think that's what trips up a lot of people. So for example, I have the Omnipod, like I said, on my behind my right arm and on my right leg. So when I'm standing, it you know, aligned and without being twisted or anything like that, or when I'm sitting and I'm aligned, I don't really have any issues, but I will have issues with something as simple as, let's say I have my legs kind of off to the side and my arm is sort of over here. I'm gonna notice that I'm gonna get uh, readings from the PDM that it's just not seeing the Dexcom. So it's not that they're not even in line of sight, it's just that my, my actual position <laughs> is screwing up the Bluetooth and it's not reading it. So. I guess that's to say, just because you insert the devices in what seems like a line of sight position, be aware that those readings are being populated every five minutes. And that if you just happen to be in a position in which they're not aligned, when that five minute interval hits, when the Dexcom is gonna update and then send that information via Bluetooth to the Omnipod, it's gonna say no signal. And so if that happens, there's a couple of, of easy fixes, I think, to start with. And so the first is make sure that everything is put on your body in a line of sight fashion, whether you do, you know, arm and leg, or like, it can also be uh, horizontal. So you can put it on like the right side of your abdomen and the lower, the left side of your abdomen. That would still be line of sight. I choose like a, a vertical line of sight, but you can do a horizontal line of sight as well. So the first thing to be aware of is just get them in a line of sight, whichever pattern you choose. But Think of things also like you wouldn't want to put the Dexcom on the back of your arm and then the Omnipod on like the front inner side of your thigh. So even though in that case, they would be on both on the right side, they're still on opposite sides of your body. So it really is pretty particular. Um, like I said, so then the other piece of that is that if you're moving around or you're sleeping in weird positions or you're sitting at your desk in weird positions, it's very possible that you're going to get intermittent um, situations in which the Omnipod is not reading the Dexcom. So it's really no big deal if it's only one reading, but if it's a whole lot of readings or if you can't get it to work, then there are some other things that you would want to try. The first thing that I always do is if I'm, sometimes I'll be sitting, like, let's say I'm watching a movie and I've been sitting in a certain position for a few hours. And so I know my devices are positioned properly, but I've been laying in a weird way. So it hasn't been reading. Um, in my case, the Dexcom, and I don't know if this is for everybody, but if you look at the, the dashes or the graph of your Dexcom as it's going along, Mine updates like at three minutes after every five minute interval. So it's seven o'clock right now. So at 7.03, I will receive my next 
Dexcom reading. And then at 708, I'll get another one after that. The point is, I know exactly when the, the Dexcom is going to read that next number. So let's say I'm going to get, let's say I have my Dexcom has, or my Omnipod has not been reading for a few minutes. At 702, this might sound ridiculous, but it really does work. At 702, I'm going to kind of sit like this. I'm going to put my my, my Dexcom is right here. And my Omnipod is kind of right out of the screen, but I'm going to put them literally right next to each other. When that next Dexcom reading hits at 703, it always updates the Omnipod and I'm back in action. So I could go from having an hour of no signal. And if I do that, it's going to recalibrate and it's going to be back in action. Now, that's not to say if I go and sit in the wrong way, it's going to not screw up again. But that is pretty much a foolproof way, at least in my experience, of getting the signal to be read again. So it's kind of making sure that those Bluetooth devices are right next to each other and they're going to work. So the key is, again, have them next to each other when that new interval is going to hit. Now, the other thing that you may notice is, uh, like in the winter, when you're wearing more clothes, you're more likely to get um, issues with Bluetooth connectivity and signal loss. That can happen not only with the Omnipod, but also with the Dexcom. So a lot of times, if the Dexcom screws up and it's not reading a signal, it's it's clear that downstream of that, your Omnipod is not going to get that signal either. And so just transitioning to the Dexcom itself for a second, if you do start to get a bunch of issues on the Dexcom app where it's not reading, you can do a number of things. And again, this is not from a manual. This is just what I do. When I notice that that's the case, you can either wait 30 minutes, which I normally do. But what I also do is I restart my cell phone. So I power it on, power it off, power it on. Then I go into my general settings on an iPhone um, and I turn off Bluetooth. I turn it back on again. And then I will open up my Dexcom app and then I will swipe up to close it. And then I will reopen it. If I do all of that, Nine times out of 10, when that next Dexcom interval comes, so let's say seven, it's 702 now, so 703, nine times out of 10, it will recalibrate and I will now have my number, which then feeds back into my Omnipod. So those are just things that have worked for me, but they've really, really worked well. And they're not things that I've seen many other people talk about. So I wanted to just throw those out there uh, for some help. The last thing I want to talk about really quick was site changes for both Dexcom and Omnipod and their timing. So the Dexcom changes every 10 days. And unfortunately that does not match up with the Omnipod, which you need to change every three days. So there's always gonna be a period in which one needs to change, but the other does not. And for somebody like me who switches both from the right side of my body to the left, this becomes an issue because uh, like just the other day, it was Monday, I needed to change my Omnipod. So I would normally go from my right leg to my left leg. But if my Dexcom did not need to change until Tuesday morning, then I would try to go to sleep with an Omnipod on my left leg, but a Dexcom on my right arm. Now, no amount of sort of contortion is going to correct that. So I would then be not getting a signal to my Omnipod all night, which is no good because if it's not reading a signal, it's not going to know how to correct. And I don't feel comfortable going to bed with it with a potential low from maybe too much insulin and it not showing it not slowing down that delivery or going high and it not seeing it to try to self-correct. So there's no perfect solution to this, but the one thing that I found that really does help, which I didn't know, is that you don't have to change the Omnipod exactly when it expires. So in this example that I just described, my, my Omnipod dis, uh, expired at 12 o'clock, so at noon. What I did is you actually have like an eight hour window, assuming you have insulin left in that pod still, um, you have, I think it's seven or eight hours to actually change the pod. So it's not fully expired. It'll still function. It'll still work just like it normally would. Um, but, but it is technically, you know, expired. So I waited in this case until eight o'clock at night. And then I chose to change both my Omnipod and my Dexcom. So in theory, I could have worn my Dexcom. I didn't need to change it at eight o'clock that night. I could have worn it until seven o'clock the next morning to really get that full 10 days out of it. But since I knew it would have led to a night that had no sleep, I chose to change it early. Um, but it's not as early as it would have been if I didn't wait that eight hours for the extended period with the Omnipod. So I don't know. I don't know about you all, but like I don't have you know a big stockpile of supplies. So I really do try to save things to for as much as I can. Um, and it's, there's no perfect solution here. Um, so I think that eight-hour window with the Omnipod is very helpful to just 
again, as long as you have insulin left in there to really max out the timing so that you can then place both devices in the appropriate spot, have the signal be read, and then have no issues when you go to bed that night. So um, the only other thing I wanted to say was that sort of related to this, but not exactly, is that I have heard quite a few issues of people who just kind of stay really, really high with the Omnipod 5 and just cannot get it to sort of meet their needs. And so a lot of times they'll increase their ratios, um, their correction factors, and all these other things to make it more aggressive. And the system seems to be learning, but maybe it's just not doing it fast enough. Now, this is not something I can speak to directly because I haven't done this, but I have heard there was, um, I don't know if you all listen to the Juice Box podcast, but it's an extremely helpful type one diabetes podcast. That's really taught me a lot of what I know. There was an interview. Uh, let me look at it real quick. It was one of the most recent ones. It was the Juice Box podcast episode 794. It's called Omnipod 5 Reset. So in that interview, there is a lady who, I think it was her her son, was in that situation where the Omnipod just, it wasn't being aggressive enough. They changed everything. They tried to make it more and more aggressive, but it just wasn't quite doing the job. She ended up having an issue with the Omnipod controller where she had to replace it. Now, normally this means you have to restart from scratch, meaning like the algorithm is going to have to relearn you um, and it's going to be a kind of a painful process. I think that's what a lot of us experienced at first. What she said though, was that with the knowledge she had from the time she had spent with the Omnipod 5 previously, meaning like the new correction factors, the new insulin to carb ratios, which were much more aggressive than she initially realized she needed, was that when she started that reset, she entered those new settings right from, from day one. And the system then learned much faster and it became much more aggressive in terms of corrective, correctly managing her son's blood sugars. And so I think it was the host on the podcast was, or maybe it was the guest, but they were, they were saying that it seems like the algorithm learning you is one, is one thing, but giving the algorithm aggressive settings right from the get-go is different. And so if you give the algorithm more aggressive settings right from the get-go, it's going to provide you with more insulin than it ever would had it just kept learning you incrementally over time. So again, I don't know if this can be confirmed by anybody else. I haven't done this myself. But if you are at your wit's end in terms of trying the Omnipod 5 and it's just not giving you the results that you want, this may be something that you want to talk to your diabetes educator or your doctor or just try to see if it actually works. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I got that out there as well.